We come from a line of warriors. Our culture embodies what football is. My father pushed the football once he understood what football could do. I think they see NFL as like kind of uh, winning the lottery, you know. I'm Fihi Gaufusi. Um, I go to Highland High School. And I'm Polynesian. A lot of people don't know really anything about Polynesians. People think we're big Mexicans. Dang, man. We're trying to gather the boys to do the haka. Mm -hmm. But, like, we, we hardly, they don't know it. And so that's why if I, I know I, I know I teach them, but like they're worried about their class. They're going to class like yeah. and they're gonna mark in there late. Yeah. So can you write them? Yeah, a note? do you wanna come in here and practice? I'm gonna yeah, take my class down okay. to the library. All right, we'll come in here. I don't like school, but football makes it so if I don't pass my classes, then I can't pass so I'll try to do my best. None of my family has ever been to college. You know, they they've gotten close. But they've uh, messed up and I don't wanna be like that. There's more Pete in there. Hey, go to Katie's room. Go to Katie's room right now. I'm gonna go grab Pete. All right. How do you plan on getting through college? Football. By far, it's it's football. Hey, for hey, listen. I'm like, hey, come on, tight, tama, high, lenny, hang in, move, do it, and then you be like, oh, 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 and then go slow, flex your muscles, go He's like, get ready for battle, it's, it's time. And then everyone gets up and then just go, oh, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 goes out the window. One thing matters on this team. It's the guy next to me on the right, the guy next to me on the left, and the 65 behind my ass that had my back. When uh, I sat down with Coach Benson, he told me of the things that I could be in the future and the things that Polynesians struggle with. We have, you know, all the talent in the world, but are the enemy of, of us, like, do good because we, um, we're more into uh, helping out our family the thing that he told me was first try to help me out and make me be the best I can be before I can help out my family. At first, I didn't like it. I thought he meant, like, you know, turn my back on my family. I didn't, didn't really like that. But now that I think about it, you know, there's a lot of little brothers and sisters that I have. And if they see me, hopefully they, they want to do better.
I always have a personal prayer before the game starts. I always write my family's names right here. Uh, the, my family names are always right here, no matter what, in every game. Coming into my sophomore year, I was the starting running back until I fumbled five times in a game. <laughs> they they cut me from running back and put me to like third string running back, actually. The fourth game, they actually let me come in and I bust this long run. And the coach is like, would you like to come and try out on the varsity team? I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I remember coming up to the varsity team and the running back breaks his arm. Who's going to run the ball? And I just remember putting my helmet on and just running in. And I started getting a feel for it. And it just went off from there. children and I dry my best. You know I ran the flag with Harvey and Paul will be next and I will run the flag until all the night kids are done. Six boys. She's like my best friend. She's like my number one fan. She's my mom. I don't think any of this is possible without her. Like none of it at all. Me and my husband can't even afford to pay for these nine children to get a scholarship. This is the way, this is the door. The Bingham High Star is one of the best running backs to ever come out of the state of Utah. And Carvey Longy. Carvey Longy. Carvey Longy. His stock as a college player seems to keep rising with each passing week. Carvey Longy, Carvey Longy. Carvey Longy. The kids, the total package, got size, speed, smarts. Got around a 3.6 GPA. So this is your third Nike camp. You went to Miami, you went to LA. Do you feel like it's giving you more exposure? Yes, yes, ma'am. He is strong and fast now. Imagine when he gets into that college weight room, how much bigger and faster he's going to get. My name is David Bloomfield. I play fullback and linebacker on defense. My name is Laval Bloomfield. I play running back on offense and safety on defense. We're our brothers. I'm older. Let's go, brotherhood on three! One, two, three! For me, football means a lot. I love the intensity, I love it. The, the quickness of the game. Just playing football is just, it, it gets me going. I mean, it's like a drug, a good drug. That, that's the only time I can hit someone and not get arrested for it. Football became uh, really heavily on me, like, in junior high. Uh, I knew the only way out of 
living in West Valley is going to be playing football. He, he's committed to Utah. He still has the option to go on any recruiting trip that he wants to go on. So you sure about the U, man? Yeah, for sure. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. That's the answer you get with everything. Oh, yeah, pretty sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Pretty... You hungry? Yeah, pretty sure. Your grade's good? Yeah, pretty sure. You love your girlfriend? Yeah, pretty sure. Except for the one at Cottonwood, the one at Cypress, the one at Granger, and the one at Kirk, you know? All right, let's hear your names. Let's start off with the ugly. Right there. All right. Get them out. We got Slim Jim, Dark Chocolate. Then we got Mr. BYU, All-Star. But then you got uh, Mr. Fantastic, really good. Level Bloomfield. Louis on the Running back and uh, just whatever the hell on defense. You know what I'm saying. Oh, don't even trip, dog. Don't even trip. Who do you think smart is? It's not a trick question, Level. That guy. It's this not about guy. being smart. It's about how hard you work. You really saying that? Well, I work pretty hard yeah. in school, and uh, I have about five Fs. That's what I'm talking about. about crack, right? <laughs> hey. crack, How are you block 24 down, Louis? Seriously, Lava, as much as teachers want to hate you, they want to like you, too. You are such a funny, nice kid that you can't hate you, but then you never come to class, and you never do your work. And then they're like, oh, piece of crap. Okay, so talk to Mr. Grosh and say, hey, Mr. Grosh. I'm not really a... Uh... Student athlete. I think of, I think of it as a athletic student, but he's cool. Me and my brother, we're so different from each other. Like we can't stand each other, but but when we're apart, it's we go crazy. <laughs> when we do go out, um, I always gotta watch over him. Like he, does, he, he doesn't think before anything he does. Well, I'm not saying that I'm perfect or anything, but he's just dumber than I am. <laughs> Leave a blue field with 80 yard touchdown plus the Wolverines on top of the whole One of the things that's part of our DNA and our genetic makeup is that we have a we have a chip on our shoulder. You know, we come from such a small place that nobody knows who we are. It creates this inner drive of wanting to excel and succeed. Every home game, us adult is six dollars, and all our kids, it's five dollars. I went in myself and ask, hey, principal, this is how many children I have. Is there any way they can work? I can do anything. I can help with barbecue. He goes, OK, Classita, your family will pick all the garbage in the stadium after the game. You know? Hey, kids! Make sure that side is all clean. The principal said, I'm not going to pay you money but I will credit here at Bingham. Right there, under that chair. This one. We are the best, because we don't have the money, but we, we have the heart. Come on, come on, girls, up front. OK. OK, go, Nane. Go, Nane. Good neighborhood, but it's not easy. There's not too many Polynesians. The only white people staying around in this neighborhood. And they are rich. Polynesians over here, they they all think you're, oh, he's whitewashed. He's hanging with all those those white kids over there, man. Screw him. Oh, I thought you were brown. 
<laughs> As we first move over here, I'm not trying to pull down my neighbors. But they don't really like it because they thought our kids is too many. <laughs> Sometimes they came and talked to me like, what are you doing? We don't really know which one is your kids and all these kids coming to your place. I know how they think. Maybe they think that we're doing drug, drugs or I'm dealing drugs or anything or something to make money just because of these kids that I have. But they don't even know. We struggle day and night. We got help from the church, from food, in the time that we can afford to pay for it. Even to help to pay our house. And here we are, still hold on to it. While the brother messed up, and now he's just another Polynesian trying to catch a job. My mom was just like, your brother's not doing anything good for our family. You're the only chance right now. I think for the salvation for the Langi family is Harvey. And our hope right now is for Harvey. Sorry. I don't even see you. Look behind you. Oh. This is um, Amanda Kalfusi. Oh. I mean, Harris. Amanda Harris. Hi. Hi. This is my girl. She supports me a lot. And when I need someone to talk to, you know, if my, my family isn't, you know, really like, you know, I can go to her, talk to her about stuff. And she's very open. We started dating in seventh grade for a while, and then Fihi left to Tonga. Me, me not having money, like, I talk to her and I tell her, like, you know, you know, I, I don't have that money, you know, birthday gifts, I can't get you that. You know, I write you a letter. And my mom always has her opinions about uh, white girls and, um, you know. With me, I don't think it's as much of a problem, just as long as, like, He's good to me, that's all that matters. I don't think color matters. I got in a lot of arguments with my mom. She couldn't even see Amanda. She hated it. She hated the idea of a girlfriend. That's a new one. I'm Mormon. I do struggle with it, you know, the girls part. You know, it's high school. People want to have fun. I live with my aunt, who I call my mom. There's too many kids in our family and too many mouths to feed, so my aunt volunteered to uh, take me and my little brother. My father doesn't live here, he lives in Tonga. He's big, uh, he's only in eighth grade. If he plays football, he's bad. My mom is uh, very strong in the Mormon church. Hurry up. She's saying, you know, church, that's the only reason why our family is still alive and, and eating. She don't like being late. That's the, that's the worst thing. She gets mad for the most is being late to church every time. So we try to make it on time to church every Sunday. Hey, how can find What you say, Get the scriptures. What's your lesson book? Let your most gracious heavenly Father, we bow our heads before thee. We thank thee for the roof you put over our heads and the food you put on our tables. We thank thee for the restored gospel you brought on this earth today. Amen. 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 Let's go. Take the laptop.
my dad. He's crazy. He played, when he was 11 years old, he played with his dad's men's team. My grandpa just threw him in. You gotta learn somehow. Supposedly, he's the best running back ever to come through. They got one of his uh, Hunter Wolverine flags right here. He was one of the best running backs in the country at his time. He didn't make it past the college level through personal problems. Everyone tells us we need to go farther than our dad. Just, just a lot of pressure. He's done. Just trying to make a name for myself. On the field, man, I ain't nothing nice. Man, what I learned on the streets, mentality, man, I just, I transferred it all on that football field. It's all about mental toughness. And with Vita, you know, it doesn't have that, that I want to I wanna rip your damn head off mentality. Whereas Leva, I mean, he's, he's totally different. I mean, he's got that chip on his shoulder. He and I are alike. <laughs> he and I are alike, and I, that's my, my boy. I have to watch him all the time. I mean, he's got, he's got that. We don't even have a fuse. Like I said, run like a beast, man. If you know you're gonna come up to some contact, tuck the ball away and put the helmet on. You gotta unleash what's in here, okay? And cut him in half. Some blood, lover. They're just blasting through like nothing. It looks like you guys don't even want to play. You guys scared? When you guys mess up, don't say sorry. We don't want to hear that. Come back and play harder. We're hardworking people. I live paycheck to paycheck. Football, man, it's not a way out, man, it's a way up. We don't want to see our, our parents struggle. They brought us from the islands to America to kind of give us more an opportunity, and I think that's, um, I think that's what we're doing, is trying to take advantage of it. And football just happens to be the best way for us to do that. There's a lot of pride in our culture. You know, letting people know that they come from a, a great family. So that we're, you know, have a good roots. That, and I could represent them. I went back to Tonga my freshman year. See my dad, you know. I went to school there for a year and I got to see how everything was like over there compared to over here. But uh, staying in Tonga with my dad wasn't, uh, wasn't all that great. I'll just say it, like, flat out. He's a cheater, a drunk. Um, no respect for him, but... Um, uh, yeah. Getting hit and all that stuff, you know, I didn't like it. Seeing him is not, um, shows me what I don't want to be. And it shows me um, that I can be something better than that, you know. It gives me more drive to, to get everything that I need to do for my family, since he's not doing it, 
um, to uh, take care of him, do the things that I need to do. When I got back, I noticed my prayer and my relationship with the Lord got bigger. I felt like I could talk to him, the Lord, like he was my dad. They told me on uh, on Thursday I was gonna speak. It's only a five minute talk, you know, it's the youth speaker. There's some words like prerequisite. I was like, prerequisite? Come on now. My grandpa converted to the Mormon religion and moved here to America for opportunity. Most Polynesians here in Utah are Mormon. First of all, we'll be pleased to hear from the youth speaker, Brother Fee Kafusi. Before I start my talk, I would like to uh, thank Brother Jorgensen for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak to you guys today. You know, there's. There's nothing more that an 18-year-old boy wants than to speak in Sacramento. <laughs> all right, Alvin Johansson. If I handle the church part, this football and all this other stuff, they'll just, they'll just fall into place. <laughs> We're walking out and he's calling Lava out. And Lava's wanting to go head up and Fuzz like, no, not here at the church. All of our family, they're all in gangs. Drugs, drinking, drive-bys. We've been around all of it. I've had my share of smoking and drinking and doing drugs and beer runs and shooting and all that. But just there's a time for it and there's a time to change your ways. And I've made my change. I don't, I don't know. parents are bad or they're, they're, they're from the islands, they're working. My parents were, my dad was always out of town. As soon as he got out of town, man, we run wild. You know what I'm saying? All my dad's brothers are in prison. All, all my mom's brothers, they're in prison. My mom and dad each have one brother that's in prison for life. A near riot allegedly sparked by a handful of Utah's most notorious gang members. A nasty members. feud between Polynesian street gangs, TCG, and baby regulators. The other four suspects are associated with the baby regulators gang. The word regulator is tattooed on his chest, and a tribal band is on his left arm. My dad and his cousins, they, uh, uh, they, they started Regulators. Sitting around one day, and we just started to call each other the regs. You know, just for the fun of it. A bunch of little kids, you know, not thinking, foreseeing what it would bring about, you know. But it was just a bunch of kids trying to, you know, just basically trying to make a name for themselves. I don't mean to be negative, but the Bloomfield name is, is it's well known um, throughout Utah and the Polynesian community. Our Bloomfield name was me. People look, people look at us as we're me. We walk down the street, oh, no, don't talk to them. It's not like they can go into a school and be like, oh, look, we have the Bloomfield here. Yeah, no, that's not how it was. It was always like their uncle did this or their dad was the start of this. Their families, you know, they, they, they take care of each other. They watch out for each other. It's people that you go to church with. It's people that you, you've grown up around your whole life. Man, what can I tell you about the rage, man? As I'm crying, <laughs> now that's my family, man. I never turn my back on them. Dude, this dude's gonna make it right here. He's gonna make it. They're both gonna. Even Levi's gonna make it, you know. But size don't matter. Size don't matter. Hell no. Taller than more. Tackle Vito. Go down faster. Go tackle your nephew right there. Dude, now. dude, I will hurt him if I tell him. <laughs> I'm serious, dude. I will tackle you, Vita. Be ready. Be <laughs> ready. 
Oh, I would hurry. Without patches, I'd probably leave you. That went a lot of You're the oldest, but hey, you're the example. Dude, they're all gonna follow your ball, dude. You're the example. Don't follow you. You see that over there? Don't follow their example. What are you going for? Dirty? You dirty boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens, dude. I'm like 10 years old. Some kids spit on my coach, like, whoop his ass. <laughs> and ever since then? State to custody when I was about 12 years old. So now. And then out of this. My Being a part of family that's, people say, a gang family, it was really hard for me, and especially Lola, because you see your uncles and cousins come and go. Either they go back to prison, come out of prison or they pass away, or they leave because they got deported. You don't get used to them being there. Like you just know that they're there for a little bit. Man. Have an older brother I haven't seen. Shook his hand, gave him a hug for over 10 years now. My little brother, same thing. How did I escape that fate? <sighs> Man, football. How you doing, big guy? Good to see you. How's everything? Look good, man. How you been? Offers just started flowing in. How you doing? Mail every day. They were all like, you know, there's this Pawnee's kid who's good at football and he's good at school. Let's get him. Let's get him. He's going to have every single thing. He's not going to need one penny from you guys. If you want to play pro football, we have the blueprint. My highlight of the whole night was when he sat there and he said, what do you want? He said, I want to be the best. I want to be the best. I'm driven to be the best. I know he's coming to USC. All the he coaches told that. me how good my worth ethic is and how crazy it was seeing me in person because they thought that I was just a, a big Polynesian that just knew how to run over little small white kids in Utah. If he doesn't graduate and he leaves to go to the NFL, we still help him get back to school and we still help him with the tuition. He comes to me, he's family. We'll take care of it. Okay, we're gonna lead us in a prayer before we leave. If this is a hard business, you know. Um, and this is what you do for a living. You try to get good players like this, but but you understand, you know. You just have to do the best you can. Yeah. If I keep making these right choices and keep my head straight, then things will just start falling in place. You know, I I'll, I'll get my degree, I'll go on and get a good paying job, or I'll be in the league. But we would love to have you in Utah. And if I'm in the league, you know, yeah, like I said, first couple checks go straight to the family. You know, it's not going to go to me. You know, the the first checks can go to mom, the second check to dad, the, you know, the third check to Michelle, Paul, like, all the way down the list. Like, it just, that's how it's going to be. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, we bow our heads and give you thanks and gratitude. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's time. I got to go to SC, and I'm going to bust my butt and show everyone that I can be a Polynesian running back. Thanks again. Oh, uh, this is wonderful. Just a Polynesian, were you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bingham High running back Harvey Longy, the top recruit in Utah, was suspended for the Miners' opener today against Hunter for trespassing. Considered by most pundits to be the top high school football player in Utah. Police officers said they smelled marijuana, and Longy first admitted that he smoked it, then he said he didn't.
feel like uh, to break somebody's will, you've got to have that desire and that passion before you step on the field. What happens? Sit up and listen. Okay? If you're not paying attention right now, act like you're sleeping, okay? And walk out of the room right now. Either get your eyes up and make eye contact or get out. Coach Peck sat us down and he just started yelling. Why is there marijuana in your guys' case? I don't care who you are. I don't care how good you are. I want you to voluntarily take a drug test. And if you don't pass it, you're off our team. Here you are, put our family over here. Here you are, put in our family. To what? To hell. It happened this morning at Hunter High School in West Valley City. A 16-year-old came to school armed with a gun. Sandy, this is scary. Yeah, it really is. So police say two 16-year-olds got into a fight out here early this morning before school. At one point, one of the students goes inside the building and comes back out with a handgun. He threatens to kill his classmate, then turns the gun on a crowd that had gathered. Hi, Ben. This is Miley. The young man who brought the gun to school his name is Leva Bloomfield. He is right now sitting in my police officer's office. He's doing the paperwork and the police officer is going to take him to DT. Bringing a gun to school level seriously. Do you realize that if you would have, like, shot that kid, you would be going to jail? You say, you say, you say, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go to prison. I don't want to be like my uncles. I don't want to do this. And then you put something like this today? So what happened? No, just, uh... Not just. Tell me what happened. We were, walk, we were walking back from a seminary this yeah. morning. And just some, of the, just some of the Mexican kids were smoking outside and they pulled the knife out on, they pulled on, yeah. They pulled the knife out on level and then. Just out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Lava ran inside to grab his uh, strap from the locker and he ran out and he pulled it out on the kid. You didn't go to school. I didn't. Is that the same gun that I seen you in the thing? No. I didn't even know he had it. Well, I, didn't, I didn't know he bring it to school. And then what happened? And, and then now, now I took it from Nava when I see when I see. So Nava runs out in the thing, grabs the gun, and runs back out to the guy, and the kid's still there, waving his knife. Look at your brother. Now he's in trouble. He's got suspended to the district because he's trying to look out for you. But he's not doing you any justice. Is he doing you justice, babe? No. And you know how much he loves you? He will screw up everything for you. He will screw up his scholarship for you. Do, do you realize that? I want to be the proud mom who goes in and checks in at the ticket box. And it's like, my son is playing today. My son is playing football today. That's where I want to be. You've got to, you have got to want more. How hard was it just to walk away and ignore the whole damn thing? You know he can't fight, that's why he's pulling a freaking knife. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? shot and you you did know he had the gun no it wasn't the same gun he got it's another gun yeah exactly no one's going to dt but lava oh but it's all right they're going to keep that hero there and go around wielding knives to anybody look he's asking shot 
See, that's what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter. We can't control the way they are, Fua. Bloomfield, Bloomfield. We're known as fighters and gangsters. And, you know, I mean, it's affected me a lot. You know, that's something I didn't foresee when I was uh, 15 years old, you know. It's gone full circle for me, kicked me right in the butt. You know, it's something I deal with and I have to deal with day in and day out. Gangs or football? Both are violent and they both are camaraderie. It's a continuous struggle, for sure. Back in ancient times, when men had to fight for their very existence, there was a group of, of men. They called themselves the Lords of Brudges. They had a family motto. It is written on the board, plus est in vows. What that translates, okay, is you have more to give. So when they'd be out on the battlefield, okay, and they'd be hurt and they'd be tired, and they'd start to get knocked down, you'd hear this cry, plus est in vows. You have more to give. The past is gone. The future lays out there at the 50 yard line. I need your knees, son. I need your knees. My knees are fine. Stay up. Kirkland for the extra point. Oh, hold on. Hold on, Jerry. Big lock, bro. And see the loud back. Knees. Knees. Coach. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, I'm ready. I'm ready. You want to get a sack for me? You want to get a sack? Go get Bring Quincy up. Bring Quincy up. You got the two eye, baby. No, hey. See, play three. Put two, put two. Nothing over here, though, right? I think it's just confused. He could have a small meniscal tear. Doubt it. No, we're not going to. Time to ignore it for now. It just sucks having so much pressure on your shoulders. Like it feels like, like, um, like I can barely even like carry it sometimes.
I travel with Harvey and he has so many gents. I was so scared. I, I, I wrote this little thing here and Paul, look at this. If BYU offer you $280,000, do you think you can accept this offer? Do you have a mouth? Say it. Yeah, I take it. Pretty school. Okay. This money, this money is yours, Paul. This is yours. How about you, Daniel? Is Stanford offer you 480,000 for four years? They offer you to come and work for them? Do you think you can take it? Yeah. This is your work. My mom, she was like, Harvey, drink as much as water as you can. She bought me water, apple juice, everything. She's like, she was so scared. Like, what if that stuff's still in my system, you know? Hey, Daniel, what do you do for them to don't accept them and make you disqualified to go here? Great. Okay, first is great. Okay, second. Harvey, Harvey, okay, drugs, grades. And those things, are, you don't even have it. You ruin it. You don't have it at all with you. Understand? It's all going to wear garbage. It's, you ruin it so much. And you can't go nowhere. It's all in garbage. She's like, if you fail this, Harvey, all of your scholarships are gonna be gone. That's when it hit me. If it is in my system and it is positive, then I'll probably just get a regular job, be a normal person, finally. And if it come out negative, I promise to myself that I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it to the NFL. He had to take a drug test or be suspended for the rest of the season. He took the test and the Deseret News obtained the results and they were negative. So Harvey Longy was only suspended for the playoff opener today with Hunter. So if you're clean okay. and we can get these hours in, there's a strong possibility you can be terminated. Yes. But I gotta get those hours from you. So. Alright. How's your brother doing? He's doing good. He goes back to to Judge Barron's to see when he gets out. I miss him a lot. Because I do everything with my brother. Wherever, wherever I go, he comes with me. It just throws everything off for me. <laughs> what up? What are you doing? Nothing. I'm just driving around the neighborhood. I'm about to go back to my mom's house. What's you doing? Nothing. I couldn't get me. All right, I'm on my way over there right now, sir. All right, we feeling mixed? Oh, you know what it is. Yeah. You're my territory now. 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 You're my territory my hands first gotta be clean. That's that's a must. Your hands gotta be clean. Ooh, this guy feels good. It's fun to do it with a lot of boys, especially when when they're jamming on the youth.
Gava is our way of holding on to our tradition, but at the same time inviting the new. I mean, we, we'll play at the position you want to play. If we feel like we want to move you. No, I'll play any position you want me to play, Coach. I just, you know, that's a, you know, that's a big thing for us. Is we're, we're trying to win football games. Yep. Do you guys have scholarships? Yes. For athletic? Yep. What's your academic interest? Right. College? Uh, psychology. Okay. A lot of the NAIA schools are going to be private institutions, very educational-based. We like to think that NAIA football is a little bit better than Division Three football, more similar to the lower end Division Two. So, okay, it's good to meet you. Thank you, Coach. And um, I'll be in touch All early right. next week. Okay, thanks, Promise. Coach. Football's not always going to be there for me. I maybe have a good body and body type to be like you know speed and stuff, but that's only going to last so long. And I got to figure out a place like school and a job to get you know a career. So, as far as him as a player. He's, he's awesome. He is, he's, a, he's a great athlete. Plays with a lot of passion. Uh, he was the heart and soul of our team. Uh, I like smaller schools, but um, I'm thinking about going on my mission. So. Are you planning on going right after school? At Mormon Church, when you turn 18, they give you a place to go serve your mission. Two years. Give me time to think about what I want and what I'm going to do, you know? Right now, I really don't know. It's gonna be hard to go back into football after two years. should go to Utah just because it'll be close to home. I think that he should go just wherever his heart wants to. For me, I want Harvey to go to Utah. 
Thanks everyone for your guys' opinions. I'm just tired. You know? Because I told myself I'm gonna make it one day so I can help all you guys. I promise. And that's a promise I said to myself. And then the stupid thing that happened with the police and stuff and I got suspended. Everyone hated me. I went to school, no one liked me. But then when I do good in football and all this stuff, they come up like, oh, what's up, Harv? And then right when I leave, they hate me. They talk crap. All my best friends, they talk crap. They just say that my friend is just good at my success right now. The world is yours until you just do something stupid. The thing that's difficult for the kids that are growing up is that their parents expect them to play in the NFL at the cost of everything else. It's hard to get in there, and it's hard, it's hard to get in there. It's even harder to stay. Um, and, if, and if kids grow up thinking, well, that's all I'm gonna do and nothing else, um, it's, they're, they're a long shot to succeed in life, period. Leva right now got referred by the courts to Decker Lake Youth Center, a juvenile jail. It's been two months. He could get an early release, but I don't think, I don't see that happening. Just to all of his charges from before. Assault on a police officer, um, assault with a deadly weapon, burglary. They're all felonies and he has five can I help you, please? Yeah, we're here for our level of the hearing. You need to secure all your personal items, your phones, purses, and your vehicles. So they only gave him 15 months in time served. They were supposed to add on two more years to this, yeah. and they didn't. Why? Because every aggravated charge that he got, and he has five, is six months for each aggravated charge. But they decided not to because of his athletic abilities and for his uh, future. future. This is very rare what they did today. He tries to act like he doesn't phase him, but he wants to get out. I want to get out. He's getting out in, in a year. So February 2012 He is won't be able to play football He's not playing football. This year. He misses this whole year. Is he bigger? Ah, yeah. he weighs 215. He weighs 215. He's and never he, uh, been over the 200 mark. He is so excited he's, he's right now. It just sucks he's gonna not be able to use it until he's in college somewhere. But he's gonna, he'll be ready. Somebody texted him. Hey, uh, he was about to give it to his girl. He was about to give it to his girl. No, what? He was about to post it. Hold on. No, I just want to play with it. Yes, see? I mean, barely. Damn! 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 It's not like Damn! In the backfield! Oh, yeah. In the backfield! Oh, yeah. back Joe, oh, yeah. yes, it's Joe! Joe, yes, it's Joe! Joe, yes, Senior year. Um, I can't even think right now. Um, game's tomorrow. It's the last game of my life. Bring it in, nice and tight. Let's go. Who did it? 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 Who did it?
What do you do with the chance? Let's go. What do you do with your opportunity? Let's go. Let's go. So that injection helped a lot. Yeah. Here, come on up here. You're awesome. by stopping them at the goal line in double overtime. It just hurt not being in the game because I, I worked so hard and so long to be in that moment. because of your ability, but because of the character that you possess, and you're the example for every young man in this great country. Being with the best players in the nation. Ricky Ross. Getting wined and dined every day, hanging out with soldiers every day. I'm an all-American, you know? I can't believe it. Don't forget that. 27. If I do get playing time at SC, you already know for a fact that NFL scouts are looking at me. And just being away from home, I can grow up. After my first year, I'd be a man, you know? I know how to do things on my own. I've never done that. Dad, can we go on the field and talk to Harvey? No. 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 <laughs> but I can feel right when I got there that I wasn't going to get that much playing time. Um, there was kids missing from practice every day to go get interviewed, and when they came back, they were already in front of me. It's going to be a long day. There's too many names at SC right now. There's like already like six running backs. Like five good running backs. And I know I can go over there and compete and probably get a fullback spot, but I'm not a fullback. And I'm not a linebacker either. I'll go play linebacker. But they already stacked in linebackers too, I bet. I a lot to get my staying home. But it sucks too, sort of. My mom's 20 minutes away. Harvey, why do you not go to church today? The Lord would not bless you. Harvey Long, USC Trojan, Cardinal of Gold, baby. And uh, I'm thinking about you. I want to talk to you, see what's up. 
Bobby, you know I'm child UCLA. I don't want you to forget about us, brother. Hello, Harvey. My name is Colin Kaiser. I'm with WeRSC.com and ESPN. Give me a call back. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, call on. I'll tell you. I'll call 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 you. I'll 808, All right, Bob, thanks so much. We'll take a look at this beautiful scene here. The Longy family has come all the way from South Jordan, Utah, to celebrate the bigger brother, Harvey, here, who is a linebacker, one of the best in the state, and he's got a big decision to make here. Harvey, you've got Stanford, Utah, and USC. You've been thinking about this for a couple of years, but this is the moment where everybody's waiting to see what you're going to do. So where are you going to play your college football? Well, sir, um, I got to stay home. I got to go over here. He's staying home, and I think that makes everybody fam happy, including the mom and dad who are back on the other end. Bob, big pick up here for Utah. What's up? We won the championship, and it, it feels like, you know, those people go to war, and then, you know, they, they won, and they come back, they don't even speak about it, you know? The ACL's gone. It's just completely torn, and then the inner and the outer meniscus are all torn. So they had to fix it all up. After I tore the MCO, I kept playing, and then I tore the meniscus. Then I kept playing, and then I tore the ACL. I guess just the adrenaline is pumping and stuff, and uh, I really couldn't feel it that much until after the game, it started hurting really bad. And so I just, I talked to Bishop about going on my mission, and uh, I went through confession. And so I just poured out everything to him on my mind and stuff that that I've done and stuff that, you know, I regret doing. This is good. She's gonna miss me. I know she will. We, we will celebrate on our way home. <laughs> <laughs> I said money. I'm just gonna go out there and do whatever I can for this team. It's like battle, like I feel like I'm a gladiator, so I'm going into an arena. It's gonna be crazy. The last 15 months have all built toward this. The beginning of the Pac-12 era for the University of Utah and Utah football. Today, the Utes begin the next chapter in their long and storied football history at the Coliseum against USC. John White. Harvey Longy on. What a place for Harvey Longy to make his collegiate debut at the Coliseum in a tight game here in the fourth quarter. 17-14.
Harvey gets his first carry, gets a yard maybe. Now he's going to be tripped up right about the line of scrimmage for no gain. One of the issues with Harvey as a freshman, can he pick up pressure, can he pick up a blitz? Wynn backs up in the gun. Longy next to him, three wide receivers. Here comes the pressure, Jordan rolling out to his right. Jordan looking down the field, just has to throw it away. He wanted Harvey Longy to cut that, uh, that route yeah. up the sideline and Harvey wasn't quite sure what to do. My rookie year, I didn't play very well. I couldn't learn the defense. Uh, I didn't learn the playbook. So I really questioned it. And I had a, a real deep inner conversation with myself, like, like, like man, I, I don't have it. This is what I've had my entire life. And it's all slipping away from me. go to Decker Lake. I wanted to go see what it was like. All my uncles went there and I wanted to turn out just like that. That's how that's how dumb I was acting. You only got two options. You gonna, you gonna get up and do good or you gonna fall. So that's basically how it was in there. So I chose to get out. Vita's like smiling ear to ear. <laughs> but it's nice, he's so happy. Hey, what's up, bro? How you been? When I got locked up, my little brothers and sisters wrote me. And they just wrote me pictures and you know, they was just writing how much they loved me and stuff like that. And I was just like, dang. You know what? I'm done. I'm done with all this gang banging. I see my little brothers. I just wish the best for them. Cause I'll do anything for my brothers. I hope they never go through what I go through. You know, just living this lifestyle, which my never, my brothers never have to. And that's why I try to teach them what I know, so that they don't have to go through this, and that they can go out and experience life the right way. These smallest hands. I know. <laughs> when I got my mission call, took that envelope, started dancing on the street. We're about to rip it open myself so I could just read it for myself. My grandma goes, hey, give me the envelope. You know, give me the envelope. We're not going to do that. We're going to open it in front of the family so the family sees what you work towards. I'm sad, oh, and you. I'll definitely miss him a lot, but I'm mostly just, I think it's really good.
And right, what's everybody's guess? New Zealand. Oh. Germany. Germany. Evanston, oh. Wyoming. <laughs> Uh, dear, ah, freak. Dear Elder Gafusi, you're hereby called to serve as a missionary of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You're assigned to labor in the Texas Dallas Mission. <laughs> Is Longy ready? Like, is he is he even ready for college? Was college came too early for him? Dude, right after I read that, dude, I put that thing on my locker, my my locker, and just went to town. You're right, nowhere to make a flight. You have nowhere to go anyway. You have nowhere, nowhere, nowhere to go. go. You have no idea where to go. I have no checks. Why? University of Utah football team to go on a two-year LDS mission. He came into Utah out of Bingham High as one of the highest recruited players in state history. He barely played at all last year, and perhaps Longy saw this as a good time to serve a mission. He can leave it behind his coaches, his friends, girlfriends, <laughs> mom and dad, brothers and sisters, and oh my gosh. Mom, I'm trying to hurry up and make this quick so we can go to the carnival after. Okay, then you need to go and get ready. I'm not getting ready to open up my call, Mom. I'm not wearing a button-up shirt to open up a piece of paper. Son, just do what Mom asks you to do. I'll put Start on some up. socks, and that's it. Go and put on church clothes. I'm not showering either. No, son. Stop it. Yeah, I'll get it A lot of people think I'm just doing my mission because maybe I'm scared of football or scared of not playing because I didn't do good my first year. I'm not scared that I can still play ball. I want to be a running back. I want to show that Polly's can be a running back in the league and and I know I have the ability to do it. I'll be back in two years. Being an older brother is a huge role in the family. My dad always told me, whatever you do, your little brothers are gonna do. That's why I was so mad at myself. Him to 
to go down in a situation, in a negative situation like that, like the gun thing that happened at school, for him to change. Hopefully he has changed.